The underdog story always fascinates me. The idea of a person rising from nothing to something they've always wanted to be is a trope that I can never get enough of. We see it in a lot of anime, movie, and books, and it makes sense because people can easily relate to such characters. However, among the countless underdog stories I've witnessed, only one has managed to inspire me on a level that is beyond words. Enter Hinata Shoyo, the main character of Haikyuu. Hinata's journey as a player and a person is probably the most inspiring story I've ever seen in an anime. A tough and realistic underdog tale that tugged on my heartstrings all the way through. It was an experience that was so rewarding it felt as if I was the one who was going through it. It was a tough ride that we went on with Hinata, full of obstacles, frustrations, and of course triumphs. It was indeed the most beautiful journey in all of Haikyuu. So, let's talk about Hinata Shoya's rise to glory, giving us moments that will be remembered as some of the greatest in Haikyuu. Hinata's entire journey revolves around one idea, becoming self-sufficient. Yes, his main goal is to play more volleyball and stay on the court as long as possible, but to be able to do that, he has to become good individually. In seasons 1, 2, and 3, Hinata is basically relying mostly on his natural instincts more than volleyball knowledge or technique. He's pretty much valuable mostly because he can hit those free quicks that are quite impossible to track and because of his beastly athleticism. What Hinata lacked was the fundamentals. He didn't know how to receive properly, he didn't think or observe much during games, he just kind of attacked, attacked, and attacked, and somehow made his way to Nationals. But now that he is at Nationals, he realizes that that isn't enough. Ever since that day he watched the little giant on the television, Hinata was inspired to play volleyball, but he just couldn't get the right training. Back in Hinata's middle school, there wasn't even a boys volleyball club, and so not only did he have to teach himself how to play, he didn't even have a team with which he could practice. He's frustrated, as anyone would be, at the fact that he didn't have anyone to teach him before or have any sort of outlet where he could chase the dreams he wanted to earlier in his life. And then of course, his lack of height. He was short, had almost zero experience with volleyball before high school, and now he has to catch up to all these monstrous players playing on the national level. On top of that, his passion for the sport is so strong that he's actually willing to get there. And so, he was told time and time again that he was just not good enough on his own and was only relevant because of Kageyama, his genius setter. Hinata pulls off clutch moves off of his instincts every now and then, but rarely is it intentional. These are plays deemed as miracles, plays that weren't completely in Hinata's control and somehow worked out. And unfortunately, Hinata has to come to terms with these facts. He isn't good enough individually, and without Kageyama, he wouldn't even be on the team. Finally, at the start of Season 4, Hinata sees two of his teammates, Kageyama and Tsukishima, getting chosen for national level training camps, and that must have really hit him hard. They were better than him because of their circumstances, the extra few years of training that they had, and things beyond Hinata's reach. And so, Hinata, hungry and frustrated, sneaks into one of the training camps. Unfortunately for him though, the coach at this training camp does not like Hinata. He is my personal favorite antagonist in Haikyuu, Shira Torizawa's coach, Washijo Sensei. Short of Hyde himself, Washijo loves training big and powerful players, and despises Hinata because he is the very thing that contradicts Washijo's entire life. A short player that seems to actually be rising up in the ranks. So, Washijo does not allow Hinata to practice with the other players, rather makes him into a ball boy. He tells Hinata straight up that he doesn't see any worth in him as a player. Hearing that from one of the best coaches in Japan was not an easy thing for Hinata to bear, yet Hinata still stayed because he was desperate to get better. There were two main events unrelated to physical practice that were actually the catalyst for Hinata to get better. If these two events hadn't happened, it could have been possible that Hinata would have simply been a ball boy and learned nothing from his experience. The first of these events is when he talks to coach Ukai after he sneaks in, and Ukai chastises him about how stupid and reckless he's been, but he tells Hinata one thing that plants itself as a seed in the back of his mind. Ato. 
Then, this takes us to the second event, when Hinata meets Ushiwaka at the training camp, the first time following their match from the previous season. Ushiwaka being the guy who Hinata challenged, who Karasuna defeated as a team, but still left Hinata feeling like he lost individually. Ushiwaka was actually disappointed by the end of season 3 because he realized that Hinata was not good on his own, which went completely against him and Washijo's philosophy of individual prowess. Up until this point, Hinata hasn't been doing much in the camp yet, and he's still trying to figure out if it was even a good idea sneaking in since he's missing normal practice back at his own school for this. And so, as Hinata is troubled and lost, Ushiwaka looks him dead in the eye with his blank expression and tells Hinata straight to his face. This was the defining moment for Hinata. This was the moment where everything changed. To hear the guy who is one of the top three players in the nation on the Japanese under-19 team and at a level that Hinata aspired to reach, to hear that guy say that Hinata was wasting his time must have hit him really hard. He has a moment to himself where he finally lets out all of his frustration and his feelings of worthlessness. He knows he's not using his time well and he's just moping around, but who wouldn't? He wasn't getting any physical practice, he wasn't even getting any food, and what could he even do as a ball boy? Ushiwaka's words keep echoing in his mind, the thought of Kageyama surpassing him haunts him, but as a result of this, Coach Ukai's advice finally surfaces. Then, Hinata finally understands. And so he does the only thing a ball boy can do. Observe. There were so many players at this camp who were amazing, and so what better way to learn than to watch those players? It is in our nature to always jump the gun and just start trying out stuff, but we rarely take a step back and just watch. Because of this, he starts picking up techniques, he begins to use his brain more to figure out patterns and tendencies, and as he runs around catching balls that go astray, he teaches himself how to position in order to receive the ball, one of the basic skills he had never learned. He finally understands that there's so much more to volleyball than just attacking. The court is full of information that he can gather and learn from. It's a very natural process that Hinata goes through, none of it feeling like it was forced. Day in and day out, Hinata runs around giving players water, running after balls, and watching everyone like a hawk. At nights, after practice, he stays back and trains with some of the guys who spend their free time at the court. As the days pass, Hinata's game sense gets increasingly better, to the point where he can usually predict who's thinking what and where the ball might be going. Yet, he doesn't just pick up the physical skills right away. The ball keeps decking him in the face, hitting him in the nuts, and pretty much making contact everywhere except his arms. This whole training process is unlike anything I've seen in an anime, but something I've experienced in real life. In most shows, the characters either just have the game sense in them or gain them after a training arc that we get to see very little of. Here we get to see the nitty gritty details of exactly what goes through Hinata's mind, whether he's right or he's wrong. I love it when we see things like the split step, a movement technique I personally have had to learn for a different sport, and so I know how valuable such a move is. Most anime don't have anywhere close to the nuance that this training arc offers, and I truly appreciate how well it teaches not only Hinata, but us as well. This creates the feeling of immersion, where we feel like we're learning alongside him. And that's the level of connection I love to have when watching something. Finally, the training camp ends and Hinata returns home to Karasuno. Here, Hinata puts his training into action and soon enough establishes himself as more than the ultimate decoy or the one who hits the free quicks. The Karasuno team realizes that Hinata is no longer a gorilla, operating strictly based on his instincts. He now actually intends to do what he does. But still, his receives have not been mastered yet and he's still getting decked in the face, again showing us that getting these things down is a slow process. And so, after the practice match and countless hours of more training, Nationals roll around, where we finally get to see Hinata shine the brightest. Karasuno Koko, 
Here, everyone is getting used to the environment of nationals, which makes sense since the courts are bigger, the pressure is off the charts, and everyone's nervous. One loss, and they're out of the tournament. However, Karasuna picks up its rhythm soon enough, and that includes Hinata. We see Hinata actively trying to read his opponents. We get some offhand scenes where we see him move to where he thinks the ball is going to go even if the blockers eventually stop the attack. He's constantly thinking and is aware of the game, which is a completely different Hinata than the one from the last tournament. Yet, he still hasn't got the receives down yet. His reading of his opponents is almost perfect, but his positioning is just a little off, and the ball ends up decking him on this test. This happens again when everyone else falls for the opponent's feint, but Hinata actually catches it, but gets body slammed again. He is improving though, constantly evolving, is Daichi and Nishinoya both the best defenders on the team? Note that Hinata actually intended to do those things, it was not by accident. Karasuno ends up winning the game and moves on to the next round, where they play against Inarizaki, the second best team in Japan, and the team that pushes Karasuno and Hinata to their limits. This game is my favorite in all of Haikyuu, a game where everyone has their own moments and a game that is filled with passion and heart, with players like the Mia twins who love the game more than anything, Ojiro Aran who is on par with Ushiwaka, and Kita the cool-headed captain who always clutches up, it was a match that was bound to be intense. A match that went to the very last set and the very last point and god damn. Among all the amazing parts of this match, Hinata's moment is one of the most beautiful scenes in all of anime. The match starts off well, with Karasuno surprising Inarizaki with their free quicks though that doesn't last long since Mia Atsumu ends up copying it soon enough. In this first set, Hinata is once again reading his opponents and perfectly positions himself for yet another attack, one which gets past the Karasuno blockers as well as Hinata. His timing is off again, and this time the ball goes to his hands and hits his foot, which causes the ball to go up but puts another failure in Hinata's book of receives. Regardless, with the help of a heartfelt moment from Tanaka himself, which I talk about in a previous video that you should totally watch, Karasuno wins the first set. Unfortunately, Inarizaki has many tricks up their sleeve, and soon enough they overwhelm Karasuno and take back the second set, which means that it was all up to the final and third set. Here, both teams are finally running out of tricks, and it's all up to the willpower and stamina of the players. Or so we thought. Inarizaki still isn't done with its surprises, and they take their title of the ultimate challengers quite seriously. They adapt to any situation and are evolving on the fly, continuously trying new things and putting pressure on Karasuno. Inarizaki takes the lead, and as they get to the middle of the set, they pull something no one had expected, a minus tempo free quick back attack where Atsumu actually spikes and Osamu is the one setting. And as this comes out of the blue and takes Karasuno by storm, our players begin to panic. At this rate, Karasuno would end up losing, and so they desperately try to get a breakpoint, something that they can use to counter when Inarizaki pulls another trick out of their sleeve. The ball goes to the Inarizaki court, and instead of a defender or someone in the back row receiving it, Atsumu jumps in himself and sets the ball right away, a beaming smile on his face. Tsukishima reads this and goes to block Osamu from spiking it, moving tremendously quickly. It seems that Osamu is about to get blocked when he changes his spike into a set at the very last second, sending the ball straight to Aran who jumps triumphantly as Karasuna falls for the feint. No one had expected a play like this, especially this late into the game and Aran slams it down with no one blocking his path except for one man. A beautiful soundtrack kicks in as the coach of the Japanese national team himself looks at the receive in awe, a receive that we'd been waiting for since season 1. This move was no miracle, it was no mistake, it was a calculated and perfectly timed receive that not only saved the ball at that instant but raised the morale of everyone on the team. 
if not for Hinata making this beautiful play, Karasuno could have been broken. Everyone said he couldn't do it. Everyone said he was only good at attacking and only good because of Kageyama. We get these flashbacks as all of Hinata's struggles, all those hours spent fetching water and enviously watching his peers get better, all of his frustration, all of his hard work, finally pays off. And for the first time, Kageyama says to him, Nice receive! It's rare to see journeys like this that are so well realized and executed in a way that not only hype you up but also create this feeling of satisfaction, again as if you were the one who achieved the feat. I know this isn't the end of Hinata's arc, hell, I feel that it's just beginning, but it's one step of the process that has been cleared, a step that truly closed the chapter of a beautiful journey in a way that left me lost for words. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and all that good stuff. Other than that, I guess I'll see you on the next one.